I'm Mike Hayes. And I'm Paul Brooks. This is a show where we sit in these chairs right here, Mike and I, and we talk about movies that we've seen recently. And we tell you whether or not they were good movies or bad movies or kind of in-between movies and then let you know so that you don't have to waste your time watching bad movies. You know what I'm saying? Paul, people don't have time to waste their time. That's Everyone's right. got so much to do. They're zipping around, they're going left, they're going right, they're going up, they're going down. It's like everyone's on their own little motorcycle just zooming away. Motorcycles, huh? Yeah. Hmm. You know why I said that. Hmm, I think I do. It's supposed to be a segue. Mm. A little something called our first movie, mm -hmm. which is Psychomania. Oh, man. Is a zombie biker flick. Awesome cover. Check oh, out that cover. That is, it's just fantastic. Absolutely. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, why don't I read the back? Why don't you read the back? Sure. Tom enjoys riding a motorcycle, and he loves his mother dearly. But Tom is no ordinary fellow. He is the leader of a violent occult motorcycle gang appropriately named the Living Dead. Oh, man. And his mother, together with a sinister butler, gets her kicks out of holding seances in her home. I'm happy here. I miss you all, of course. I couldn't be happier. Through her, Tom makes a pact with the devil to return from the dead one by one. He and his fellow bikers commit suicide and return to a secret place called the Seven Witches. Or do they? Is the butler really just a faithful servant in a mystical household, or is he really Satan himself? Why do you never get any older, Shadow? And what is the secret of the living dead? Watch this movie with someone you trust and find out. Wow. Well, first of all, can I say that I really love your, your gang outfit? Oh, well, thank you. I like yeah. yours as well. Thank you. I'm in the Fast Eddies. That's well, the name of my gang. Because of Eddie Olmos? Yeah. He's our leader. Mm -hmm. He's a cool guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just ride around on our hogs. Nice. And we just sort of, you know, we're nice. We just help people out. We say, so say we all. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can do to help you? Is kind of our thing. That's very nice. You know, mixing it up a little bit. Yeah. I'm in the I'm in the Dead Hawks. Oh. It's, it's got a dead Black Hawk guy. Yeah. And then a. Oh, leather. Very cool. We hurt people. You do? You're bad? Yeah. <laughs> Blackhawks, you know, that, that, that makes sense. Salt and pepper, I don't know. Yeah. So, this movie has so much going on for it. Um, it is, it was made in 1971. Mm -hmm. It's a British film. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it has a very interesting vibe to it. You gotta dig the vibe on this one. It's weird. There's a lot of stuff going on. Basically, there's this biker gang, the Living Dead, and they are rough and tumble, they're messing with people, they're goofing around just to get their kicks at anyone's expense. Definitely just th these weird kids with the cool helmets. Like, they all wear, all their, their motorcycle helmets are painted with this, this design. Super it's cool. Pretty, so it would be a sweet Halloween like group costume. Yeah. And no one would get. <laughs> hey! 
he sort of, the, the, our main character, played by uh, George Sanders. Tom, Tom is played by George Sanders. Mm -hmm. He tries to convince his girlfriend, who is also part of the gang, to kill themselves. We should kill ourselves, you know? And she doesn't want to do it. Let's cross over. Cross over? To the other side. How do we do that? We kill ourselves. Oh, Tom. Not that again. Yes. So, uh. and he uh, gets it in his head that if he kills himself, he can come back to life. We'd miss all this. But we'll come back. It'll be even better. Kind of as a zombie, but not really, because yeah. when we typically think of zombies, we think of, oh, and it's not like that. No. He's totally normal. Just, he can speak. Yeah, he's not trying to eat other people or anything. Right. No. He, he strikes out on his own and kills himself. Yeah. have his funeral which is amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> because for some reason they they bury him on his motorcycle but yeah. like clearly didn't dig the grave far enough so he's like up like his head is like poking out of the ground and they have to like pile all this dirt on top it of doesn't, it doesn't like why wasn't he even like a casket or anything he's just riding his bike and the world The chosen few know of his fame. Come join his company, riding free. His mom, Tom's mom, holds all these seances and she knows more about this sort of thing. So her and her, what did they call it on the back? Sinister, sinister butler? Yeah. They know that he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. So Tom dies, and then he calls home, and he's like, hey, and the butler's like, Tom, hey, what's up? Yeah, like he just knew. Lathe Banner. Hello, Shadwell. Good evening, Tom. I made it, Shadwell. We all knew you would. How did it feel to be back? Splendid. Enjoying every minute. <laughs> After the rest of his gang sees that he can come back to life they start doing it too and they start jumping off of bridges with mm. their motorcycles and plowing through like semi trucks and all sorts of crazy stuff But the key to killing yourself, according to this, according to the ritual of the film, is that you have to believe oh, yeah. at the moment of your death, you have to believe that you're going to come back or you won't. Yeah. Did so anyone not come back? Yes. Oh, okay. There was, there was a, a guy and a girl in the biker gang who at the same time, I believe... They jumped off a bridge into a truck, right? Right. Yeah. And the girl made it. But the guy didn't make it because he didn't, he didn't believe. believe. Hinky isn't coming back. At the last moment, he hesitated. He didn't really want to die. So you got to be careful with these things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's dangerous stuff. Certainly. <gasps> Tom, she's dead. Of course. Some of my best friends are dead. <laughs> The whole weird, there's a very weird subplot with frogs. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where part of coming back to life after you kill yourself has to do with like this frog like amulet that mm -hmm. Tom is wearing. I want to bury this with Tom. What's in it? Thank you. Weird. Goofy. But, but that to me is what makes this movie so great. No, oh, yeah, it it's was this weird. it's this crazy, you know, early 70s just weird British movie and it has well, I think it has a lot going on for it. Psychomania. Psychomania. Yes. Let's do a little something called High Point, Low Point. What is High Point, Low Point? Well, Paul, uh, I want you to tell me the high point of the movie. And then you're going to say the low point of the movie for you. Yeah. I'm into it. Um, there's a lot of high points in this movie. Um, there's a, a lot of weird, wacky, crazy stuff going on. But to me, the high point is... There's a scene where mm -hmm. he has to enter this chamber and, like, confront this frog. And there's this, like, frog in the mirror, and it's just, sort of, to me, sort of epitomizes the strangeness of this movie. Yeah, it's funny you say that, Paul. Yeah? Because my low point in the movie, because like I said, there's a lot of high points. And I think it, the movie really kind of plateaus with the absurdity going on in it. Yeah. And then that spikes up, this weird psychedelic scene. So I'm going to say the low point is everything outside of that. And that's not saying it's bad, but I just wish there was more of that. I, I wish gotcha. there was more weird, trippy stuff going on. I gotcha. It was weird. I mean, it was right. weird. But it's hard to pick just a low point. So I'm going to say everything but that. Gotcha. The soundtrack was really great. Mm -hmm. Very psychedelic. Very, totally. Very cool. Very, you know, kind of late 60s, early 70s vibe. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun. This movie's lots of fun. Blasts. Oh, Tom! And another thing. You can only die once. After that, nothing and nobody can harm you. Oh, man, what are you waiting for? Well, Mike, I'm just going to come right out and say it. I absolutely love this film. And <laughs> two hands up in the air. Two hands. Right there. There it is. That's fantastic. Paul, my review also involves two hands. Two hands on the face. Just a, what is happening? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Very appropriate. Mm -hmm. I like it. Well, we really enjoyed this movie. Hope you, you guys get a chance to check it out, too. There's a lot of people out there right now, right out here on the street, who are talking about this movie. So let's throw it to our main man on the street, Tim, to see what other people have to say about Psychomania. Tim, what's up? Hey guys, you know, I'm out here in this neighborhood and there's all sorts of people walking by, but no, no one, no one's stopping to talk to me. So, uh, you know, I also just hang out here for a little while and, and see what I can get. 
All right, thank you for that update. Our second movie of the evening here on B Movie Mania. Uh, exactly. Mike, I don't even know what the name of the damn thing is called, so will you read that, please? Paul, it's called Prototype X29A. What, is, what, is, what does that mean? What does that even mean? I don't know. Why don't you read the back and tell us? All right. <sighs> Prototype X29A. Mankind doesn't stand a chance. Against Los this movie. <laughs> exactly. Los Angeles, 2057. The future. A lawless, war-torn terrain where a beautiful young woman, Chandra, and her ex-lover, a crippled soldier, Hawkins, share vivid psychosexual dreams. This all sounds great so far. Sounds amazing. Sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. I was pumped to watch this thing. Who, who wouldn't be? Exactly. When a brilliant research scientist experiments on Hawkins, he becomes Prototype, a half-man, half-machine robot. The experiment goes out of control, and the prototype goes hunting for Chandra, whom he is programmed to kill. In an explosive climax, no, the ultimate battle commences that will determine whether mankind or machine will survive. It sounds fine. It sounds great. It's not. I don't think I've ever seen a movie that is more inept in... Tr attempting to tell a story. It, it's it's a movie about it's post-apocalyptic. It's about we know it's about pro prototypes, which are some sort of robot. Uh, Omegas. Yeah. Which we assume are some sort of robot. And there's protectors, which... <laughs> it should be so easy to say it. The thing on the cover, this thing, this is what is the prototype, all right? But you don't know that, because there's these things called Omegas, and they're like... But they are, like, they're not in it, or are they? Like... It, it's mind-boggling how absolutely just incapable they are of just saying what things are. I will say this. Most movies, believe it or not, follow a very basic formula. Mm -hmm. There is... A central character there are characters around that central character there is a conflict that must be resolved and then there are things that happen in the film a leads to B leads to C leads to D and the characters go through the story attempting to resolve the conflict yeah None of that really happens in this. No. There are just things sort of nebulously happening. It's a jumbled mess. And you feel like you should know. I, I honestly felt like maybe something was wrong with me while I was watching this movie mm -hmm. because I was trying so hard to figure out what was going on. And every second, we were just, wait, what? Prototype was nobly conceived and badly executed. So is that... The prototype, or is that the Omega, or is that the protect, or is the protector? The you just had no clue the whole time. It, they did a very poor job of. They'd present something, and you'd see it, and you'd be like, "Okay, now I need this explained in some sort of context." Yeah. And that was never done. Yeah. There was no context to anything you saw. Right. Sometimes they would be on a computer screen once. It would say like "protectors activated," but at no point did they. Did you know who the protectors were or what the protectors were? We, I kept expecting them to show up. I'm like, all right, well, what's this protectors thing? It, uh, it, it was a mess. It was just a giant sigh. Just, yeah. we kept... Uh, By the end of the movie, I mean, I wanted to just go to bed. I wanted to flip the table. I was angry. 
So there's this girl who she's she's a child in the beginning and she and she might be some sort of magical child. Take her to the outskirts. No one must know she is. <laughs> we're not sure. We think that we think she might be an omega, but we're not sure. Can't tell ya. She's a girl. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward like 10 years later, she's grown up. She looks pretty cute. You know, she's doing some stuff. If you're my father, who's my mother? You are an Omega now. It will take some time. Uh, and she hangs out with this guy, Hawkins. Mm -hmm. And you think that Hawkins has like a crush on her. You found yourself another place to live yet? We're going to go over this again. I got more than enough room for you to stay here. Have you ever heard the term you're beating a dead dog with a broken stick? I'm just offering you a place to stay. You don't have to be reading so much into it. it it's just, it, it, you could tell there's a longing and so then he does like a virtual reality thing. At least that's what we think it is. Maybe it wasn't. There's a whole... Yeah. Just, it doesn't make sense. And it's... There's a... They leave. There's a whole B story that somehow circles back to the A story. You don't. You can't tell they're lining up in any way. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. There's there's just so many characters, and there's no focal point. They mm -hmm. they you think that there's a main character, but then they're they're like with Hawkins for a long time, and he's just like sleeping and like hanging out and, and doing nothing. <sighs> nothing happens. And then there's like a scientist, and then there's like these guys who like snap people's necks a lot. Paul, that being said, yeah. high point, low point. <sighs> well, uh, I, do you want to, can you think of a high point? Can you do that for me, please? I have one high point. Okay. At the beginning of the movie, the very beginning of the movie, mm -hmm. the prototype comes walking into this town and he's shooting some guys and there's some really bad like screen, like his point of view, kind of like scanning thing yeah. that's kind of humorous to look at. Uh, and he shoots some people and there's a little bit of gunfire. And that is about the height of anything in that movie. <laughs> and it action. wasn't great, but there was a little action and yeah. it gave you a little hope. Like, all right, let's see what's going on. It's confusing at first, but in the first five minutes, that's fine. Right. But they never resolve that. Right. So my high point is that. It's funny that you mentioned that because you actually, within that, mentioned my low point. Oh, yeah? And there's a lot of them, but the issue is all those screens of, it's supposed to be POV, the prototype. Yeah. And he's got like a computer thing in front of his face, you know, because he's a machine and it says all this stuff. And it just keeps happening throughout the movie, not only with the prototype's uh, interface or whatever you, whatever you want to call it, but also with just like people being on computers constantly and you having to like squint to like read all sorts of different things. And it's just really hard to take. And it goes through the entire movie and I'm mad about it. Understandably. <laughs> it didn't help matters, Mike, that you apparently uh, purchased a 
VHS tape that is for the hearing impaired. <laughs> yeah. Because half of the movie was in subtitles. Oh, far that was amazing because the subtitles were on or yeah. the captions were on, and it was, so it was doing that. But then it would stop at some point, yeah. like it didn't care, and then sometimes it was just gibberish. That yeah. was kind of that should have been the high point. Yeah, I read. I I, I you changed my redo it. My high point is the the dumb closed captioning. <laughs> Mike, this movie was really tough to get through. So I want to help the viewers out a little bit and come up with a survival list of things for this film mm -hmm. that is going to help you get through Prototype X92A753. Okay. You got, you got three things for me? I've got a list. All right. Number one, a copy of the script. Uh-huh. You need to be able to follow along in this movie, maybe make some more sense of it, get some clues, catch... Maybe the director wrote some notes on the script, that could be helpful. Number two, the director, sitting right next to you, <laughs> so you can ask him questions. Like, what were you thinking? Why on earth did this happen? What possessed you to make this movie? And number three, uh, some sort of a laser gun that you could then shoot the director afterwards because you watched in the movie. He made. Oh wow, like a future la laser gun from the from the future. Mm -hmm. Very nice, good call. My three things, if I may. Number one, caffeine. Get get some soda. Get some coffee. Get both. Uh, get get a few monsters. You're gonna need all of that just to keep yourself awake through this movie. Should you choose to watch this movie. Number two, at the end of the movie, you're going to be pretty upset because you just wasted 90 minutes of your life watching this horrendous train wreck. Uh, you're going to need your mom for number two. You're going to want to call her. Listen, things happen in life. Things don't always go as planned. What I like to do when things don't go as planned, I call my mom. Just give her a call, talk to her for five, ten minutes, you'll, you'll feel better about what you just went through. Number three, other plans. Try to make other plans for when you're going to be watching the movie. Because if a friend calls you, you can then turn the movie off and go out and do something, anything else, than watch this movie. Then you'll be set. And then you'll survive prototype, whatever the hell else it's called. Paul, let's review this thing. Two fingers, so you can just poke your eyes out with them. Just gouge them. Just... Yeah, that sounds, that sounds pretty good. I wish I would have thought of that while I was watching the movie. Mm -hmm. For me, I thought about giving it no fingers, because... It's close. It's close to one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but it's not quite there. So what I want to do... What? What do you... Paul? Paul? I got, I got some nail clippers here. I saved one nail. <laughs> Prototype. X29A. One oh. pinky fingernail. Well, sorry for ending on such a downer, but... Yeah, sorry about it. Didn't mean to do that. It's just, you know, when you see prototype X29A57825653, you'll, you'll understand, and then you'll want to go to bed, like we're probably going to do right after this is over, you know? So... <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode, and we will see you next time on B Movie Mania! Good night. Ugh. Well, I got nothing.